Yeah, good. Nice about the car, though. <laughs> I'll give you a drag race. Right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. So today, I'm actually lucky enough to be test riding a very new to market electric motorcycle, which you can see just peeking into the corner of the shot there. This is the Maving RM1. So I'm gonna quickly flip the camera around so you can see exactly the motorcycle I'm talking about. And here it is. So not to be confused with the Yamaha R1M, a bike which is a very different proposition in terms of price and performance, the obviously internal combustion engine. This motorcycle from Maving is fully electric. So there's zero local emissions from the bike. You can see there's no exhaust on the bike. It gives it a very clean look. So this bike actually has two battery packs and I'll come and show you the batteries in a little minute, but it gives it a top speed of 45 miles an hour depending on the riding mode and also a maximum range of 80 miles so actually quite a long way um, for an electric bike in this category so this bike is definitely aimed at the urban commuter it's a city bike i've actually brought it out into the country today we're in a little village green so I've, i'm actually taking it outside of its uh, probably intended environment but that'll give a little bit of a um, information to those of you who do live in the country and perhaps are interested in an electric bike. So let's start by looking at the bike. Um, it's got a very classic look. You can see it's got two 19 inch wheels front and back, the same sized wheels. So that's uh, quite um, a, a striking design feature they've gone for. If I move in closer, you can see you've got a single disc up front. It's actually a free piston front disc. I'll come along to, to talk about that a little bit later. Here you've got a battery compartment and then you've got this kind of exhaust manifold-esque, uh, that's actually metal, which is quite nice, exhaust manifold tube, which contains the wiring going from the battery um, to the controller, which is in, in this compartment. And then you've got no chain, nothing like that. You've just got this pretty substantial Bosch hub motor. So you can see you've got a substantial cable there running from the controller, uh, which is where both of the batteries, because I've actually got two batteries here, both of the batteries, um, the power is a, a free phased uh, power supply. It gets converted from uh, DC into AC for the motor and runs along into this Bosch hub motor. So there's permanent magnets here, the electrical uh, charge in AC, it alternating current comes through here and it starts um, spinning the rear wheel. So, real, real clever design, actually. Okay, right, let's step back a bit, have a look at the bike, obviously single seater, and then you've got uh, this tank here, which makes the, the main impression on you. And they do a variety of colors, so I've got a blue here, but they also uh, have green, white, gloss black, and a, a kind of pebble gray, which is really nice. So I'm gonna try and remember how to unlock the tank. So if I turn the ignition off. Okay, so I managed to do the sequence there to expose both battery packs. Um, you can see here I've got dual battery, so I've got this lovely um, Samsung battery here, uh, which is handheld, and you can pull this battery out of the, the tank, the storage compartment that's on top of the bike. But you've also got the main battery in here. So you can see it's got this wood finish, it says Maving on it, it's really, really nice actually. If I pull it out, it should allow me just to take it out. I can place the battery down, and there you can see it says Maving in wood. It looks really, really nice actually. And then you've got some locator pins and terminals there. So if I want to reseat the battery, I just pick it up, make sure the Maving faces the bike. So you pick that up there, Maving faces the bike, doing this one-handed, it's a bit difficult. Slot it in, and then just, and the battery is now back in the bike. If I want to do the same thing with this one, you can pull it out there. If you didn't want to fit two batteries, you could use this for storage. There's actually a little USB-C charger in there, which is quite useful. 
So two batteries, uh, 40 miles range per battery. I'll just shut that again. And let's just step back a little bit. So it's quite nice really. It makes a bit of a difference from electric vehicles where you've got to plug them in using um, specialized infrastructure. Here, you just take the battery out, there's a charging dock, and you can put it under your desk while you're at work, and then the battery is recharged by the time you want to go home. Um, the, yeah, you've got a full battery. Uh, and you can obviously have one on charge and one to use the bike as well. Now the bike used to be 4999, but they've increased the price a little bit. Um, this is due to component prices going up, fuel going up, um, delivery costs going up. So basically all of their costs have gone up um, from mating. So the bike used to be 499 single battery, 599 dual battery, but it's now priced at 599 for the single battery or 699 for the dual battery. Now we can see on this bike we're in dual battery configuration. They've also got these rather special carbon fiber mud guards. These are genuine carbon fiber. They're a really nice weave actually. So if you put your finger underneath them, it's so smooth. That is not cheap carbon fiber. Um, and it's, it's reflected in the price. These are a 300 pound optional extra on top of the bike if you do want to spec it with the carbon fiber. I probably would do that. I mean, it really sets the bike off. So up front, um, we've also got some other little features here. Um, we've got the Founders Edition nomenclature here. So the first 100 bikes sold are actually numbered here, but the rest of them will just say RM1 on them. Um, if Another option actually you can have on the bike is a tracker, and that actually sits in here. So you can spec that, and there's some other little trinkets that you could have locks as a disc lock, a, a rear wheel lock, and a bike cover, which are all branded. Um, so that's, that's some optional extras. The seat here, obviously it's single seat only. You've got dual springs over shocks at the rear. And if I come and sit on the bike, I'll just show you what you actually get to see when you're riding it. Very, very light bike, by the way. 111 kilos in single battery configuration, I think 118. If you've got two in. Nice keyring, nice uh, keyring chain there. Let's switch the ignition on. You see it does its initial initialization. Really cool. We're in neutral now, so if you want to put it into drive, you have to hold one of the brakes. I'll, I'll come to the brakes in a minute. So hold one of the brakes, which I'll try and do, if I can do it with one hand. Press, drive, and you see on the dash, it's now flicked to one. So that's one of the ride modes. It won't go anywhere. Let's see if I start to open the throttle and start to move forward. It won't go anywhere until I start to do this. There's no reverse gear. Um, there's a drive and a neutral, the other gears that you've got available. Now there are actually rider modes on this bike. So if I press drive, you see it cycles through two and three. Now one is the full power mode. This allows you to ride at 45 miles an hour. And if you drop down into two, that's 30, oh, 28 miles an hour. And then three is 20 miles an hour. So this is really cleverly done because it actually is in line with urban speed limits. So you, if, you, if you are in a 30, just put it in two, 28, then you're never going to exceed the speed limit, even with the throttle wide open. So that's a really nice feature, actually. So I'm going to drop it back into neutral. The side stand goes down really easily. And just put that down and show you some of the other things. I mean, the switch gear and the um, bar end mirrors are really, really nice. You've got mathing there, which is in, in um, raised lettering. This clamp is really nice. Uh, again, the, the, all of this dash and instrumentation is really nice looking. I'll just show you the front of the bike as well. The headlamp has dipped and high beam. And if I just go in close there, you can see it says mathing inside the lamp, which is really nice. Obviously LED indicators. They're not self cancelling but not really an issue. But yeah, if I step back, I'll just show you, it looks absolutely stunning. Okay, so I'm gonna get on with the ride now and let you know what I think when I'm actually on the bike. Right, okay, so to start the bike, turn the ignition on. You'll see the dial goes through its initialization process. Now you have to make sure the, center, the side stand is up. It doesn't have a center stand, so just slot that up. And then what you want to do is to hold down one of the brakes. And you've got two brakes at the front, and I'll explain that when I'm riding. 
So I'll hold down the front brake first, just press the drive button, and then that switches from neutral into drive. And you can see I've got 94% charge, so we're good to go. Right, well, I've got conventional indicators, so I'll just drop those to show I'm moving off, do a shoulder check, do my turn in the road, which is ridiculously easy, because this bike weighs nothing. And off we go on an electric bike. <laughs> Pretty good fun, actually, to be fair. Oh, I just went to the change up, which is a mistake you'll probably find yourself making. I'm going to put the visor down. Obviously, there's no engine noise, so listen to the visor up. All you've got is that wind noise. You haven't got any, any noise, any experience. It's, uh, it's quite strange. Um, but yeah, so off we go. We're in riding mode one now, and when I get out of this little village, you can see I'm doing just under 30. I'll open it up a little bit, and we'll increase our speed to see what it goes up to. I think it'll go up to 45, maybe a little bit higher. So there's 35. It does crash a little bit over the bumps. Okay, here's a 50, so let's see if we can increase the speed. So there's 40. Do about 42, because we're beginning to go up a hill. Around the corner, yeah, you see it struggles a little bit going around the corner and up a hill. An indicate, conventional indicators, which is really nice. Pull away. One thing I will mention, it's ridiculously smooth. Like the, the, the throttle, there's none of that snatchy throttle you get with Euro 5 internal combustion engines. It's beautifully smooth. I mean, look how nice this is, just trundling along this uh, country road. Silently, I mean, how crazy is that? Right, now I'm gonna talk about the brakes a little bit. So you've got two brakes. Yeah, obviously. You've got two brake levers, though. So this is the cl where the clutch lever would normally be. So what you want to do is, if you want to apply both brakes, combined braking, you can slam on this one, and it'll apply a 60-40 rear front bias. And it, the front brake actually has three uh, pistons, and it'll apply two of them if you use this lever here on the left-hand side. Whereas, if I want to apply the front brake, I can heavily apply the front brake using just this lever. The brakes are, are more than adequate. I've got a single disc at the, at the front. And uh, the rear, I don't know whether I've got a disc or it's using the motor to brake. But nonetheless, the braking situation is, is more than adequate for this bike. And I'm having quite a lot of fun, actually. Obviously, I'm riding on uh, sort of... Uh, cross-country tyres. What's this mud? Visibility out of the mirrors is really good, so that's nice. You can see loads. I love bar end mirrors. I'm so glad they went for bar end and stick some sort of bargain basement mirrors on here. I can read the dash very easily. It's really, really nice and clear. I like that about the, the RM1. Right, off we go. That is max acceleration though. I mean, I, I do weigh 80 kg. I actually went to the hospital the other day and had myself weighed, so... I'm 80.6 kg, so bear that in mind. Performance on this bike will be af uh, affected by the rider's mass. So if you're tiny, then it's going to be a lot, well, maybe not a lot, but it's going to be quicker than if you're... Uh, a uh, heavier gentleman, shall we say. The switch gear is really nice. I mean, it's lovely how integrated everything is. Obviously, I've got a high end maybe in there. Oh, these bumps really kill you, though. Suspension's definitely made for smooth city roads. <laughs> um, I've got high and low beam here. I've got a good sounding horn. I'll just test for you. Good enough horn uh, indicators. But they've also incorporated the locking system for the battery packs into the into this switch gear which is really nice so it's a beautifully smooth ride i'm like really getting used to the acceleration on the bike 
I mean, I am at max speed there. Oh, hang on, 46. No, it's about 45. Oh, hang on, on the straightaway. I'm almost reaching 50. It feels like it's limited. Close to 50, though. Let's try out the other riding modes. So you don't have to have a brake or anything applied to change riding modes like you do from going to neutral to drive. So what you would do is just press D and now I'm in mode 2 and that gives me up to 28 miles an hour. So this is going to be perfect for city environments. Yeah, I, can, I can, can't do 30, it just, there's just no go. And again, if I want to go into 3, then I'm limited to 20, <laughs> which I, I, I can't really apply in, in uh, the country road for safety reasons. Right, let's try the front and rear brake. Yeah, that was good. I was able to trail brake a little bit as I came around the bend there. That was really nice. One thing you'll notice is that you hear the wind noise a lot more. You haven't got that distraction of the engine. And you also have to quick check your speed every now and then because you can't really correlate how fast you're going with the engine revs. I found it very easy to get used to the, the controls. I'm not going for a clutch. I mean, I found this on the Honda Africa Twin DCT. I find it quite easy to uh, adapt to a new bike. I mean, maybe that'll be the case for everyone. Maybe some people will find it harder, harder or more difficult, but I, I'm really enjoying it. So let's talk about pricing. This motorcycle now is priced at £5,999 for the single battery. And the single battery gets you 40 miles in range. Dual battery gets you 80. If you want to have the second battery, then you're up to 6999 and that is seven grand uh, for an electric motorcycle. I think Maving have done the right thing here because they've made an electric bike that really plays to the strengths of electric motorcycles. And that is the urban environment with multiple charging points. They've got removable batteries. They've gone for a low price point and they haven't gone and positioned the bike in a, in a segment that would require longer range. It almost is fit for purpose. I really like that. They've gone for style. It, it's, it is selling well. As I mentioned, 52, 53 units sold in August. They're having a, a good September. Uh, they've had a good September. 100 units sold, um, over 100 units sold. And they've got, uh, yeah, a, a strong sales pipeline. And why not? Should apply both brakes here. You can really hear the car engines when you haven't got the exhaust note of the motorcycle, which is usually a bit louder. Well, that was a bit naughty. Um, other costs associated with a bike, well if you want to pay a little bit extra to have the tracker, £200 and, a, and it's a company called Octo and they actually fit a tracking system that integrates with the Maving app. That's really cool to have. So you can have a, an integrated tracker that lets you know where your bike is at any time. Of course there are privacy concerns with that and you can turn off location uh, tracking as well if you so wished. Other things are obviously the carbon fibre mud guards, which are £300 extra. They're really nice. Um, I actually really like the look of the carbon. So I would probably suggest to, to opt that if I was going to spec this bike. Ongoing costs for the bike? Well, you won't have um, road tax to worry about because it's a fully electric vehicle. So that's a bonus. Right, well, we're now in the bike's more natural habitat which is the urban environment. I'm going to put it into mode two, and thus I can never break the speed limit, which is quite handy. Um, and on a smooth road, it really is perfect. I'm constantly using the combined braking system, which is 60% rear and 40% front. And it's just perfect. And also, it's so light, like I can get up off the bike. It's really comfortable, like the, the rear shocks are nice. The seat, even though the seat appears quite small, it's really good actually. So some people looking. What's that? Electric, yeah. Right? Well, mate, how you doing? Yeah, good. good? Nice balacava. <laughs> I'll give you a drag race. Hey! That's, that's Matt. <laughs> that was funny. 
The ride is actually buttery smooth. Now I'm in the city, I think when I was out in the countryside on those roads, it was a little bit rough and tumble. But now I'm in the city, it's, it's buttery smooth. I've got a smoother road surface. It's really nice, actually. I'm just going to peel off here, use my combined rear brake just to bleed off some speed. And, oh, that's amazing. It's so nice to do a little turn in the road with this bike that weighs so little. It's really, really flickable and nice. I'm going to just try and pull out of here. So when this white car's gone and this car's made its turn. Look at that. Oh, it's enjoyable. Really, really nice. Not self-cancelling, so need to remember that. I'll just quickly speak about servicing. So Maving actually will offer to come to your property to service the bike. And they've got a, a van. Uh, they'll put the bike on a ramp, do all the normal sort of internal combustion engine servicing. So they'll grease the pivot points on the bike. You've got the option of brake discs as well, which will eventually need to be um, replaced. They'll also do stuff to the motor. And there's, there are actually firmware upgrades to the um, controller uh, for the batteries and also for the batteries themselves, which will give you a little bit more range. So this bike might actually get better as you own it, which is uh, uh, without you having to spend any extra money. They haven't actually told me the price for the servicing yet, but it's going to be about an hour and 15 minutes. That's what, how long it takes to complete the service. The first service is at 300 miles. And yeah, it's, it's 300 miles or, or the first six months of ownership. And some people have actually exceeded. Is it 300 miles or 600 miles? I'll have to check that for you. And then after that first service, you've got servicing at uh, every 3,000 miles. Now they haven't actually priced the service yet, uh, as far as I know, but they have said it'll take an hour and a quarter, uh, which, They'll price them accordingly. Wow, this is just glorious. Silence. Riding a fully electric motorcycle. What a joy. Just flip the indicators, go around here. So guys, I think I'm going to end the video there. Um, what will I say about this bike in conclusion? Well, I think if you bought the bike, you were happy with the price. You were happy with the range and the speed, the performance. I don't think you'd be disappointed. The fit and finish is what really separates this from other electric vehicles. It's also got a nice element of style to it. I mean, you've got that classic look. It looks like the kind of bike Steve McQueen would have jumped over the uh, barbed wire on The Great Escape if he was going to ride an electric bike. It does look with those dual 19-inch uh, matching uh, wheels like a very classic British bike. It's got that uh, design element nailed down, so I really like that about it. Um, yeah, the, 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 the features as well are really clever, like how the battery compartments lock. Um, let's just pop it into first to go off this roundabout. Oh, off we go. Indicate. Yeah, the features, like how they've integrated this in here, bar end mirrors, the use of materials as well. It's really, really nice. It's a really nice design bike. And, and I also, one thing which I always, oh, I went for the uh, drop down the gear there. One thing I will mention on, um, on the, the whole brand as well. When I visited the showroom, or the factory actually, in Coventry, they couldn't have been nicer. And that actually means a lot to me when I'm buying a bike, if people, either it's in the showroom, or in this case the factory, they've, they've really gone to town to make sure I was happy, I knew how to operate the, the vehicle and everything. So fair play, uh, maybe I would say are a great company, I think it's a great product. Uh, the way it all works as well, you'll pick it up in no time. Um, look, I can drop into neutral, and then look, I can't go into drive, but quickly apply the brake, and then I'm back in. 80% charge still, and I've been pottering around for for about an hour. Obviously, I've stopped to do a little bit of filming, but it's uh, it's not caning the battery, and the battery use is very dependent. Oh, hello. It's weird, isn't it? Gone on the red. The battery use is very dependent on your your uh, throttle, so I could have waited for yellow. So um, yeah, it's it's amazing, and everything's just. Just, just well designed and well thought of. I'm really enjoying it. Um, let's talk about the countryside's 
uh, versus the rural split. I think you'd struggle a little bit if you were to use this bike out in the country. It wouldn't be its best environment, shall we say. In the urban environment, well, it's just magic. I mean, look how smooth it is. So comfortable. So comfortable, flickable, light, easy to manoeuvre. Slow speed control is a dream. Turning circles is a dream. I've got no vibration from the motor so I can see clearly in the mirrors. It's, it's really, really special. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed my quick review of the Maving RM1. I certainly enjoyed riding it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot.